Cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so thanks, thanks so much for having me. It's nice to be here virtually. Um, oh, I don't need this. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna talk about homological stability and curves on bullets of projective space. Um, so I guess to, to start out, I just wanna start off with uh, to telling you my notation for projective space. So PN is always gonna be a complex projective space. So it's, it's the quotient of uh, N plus one non-zero coordinates uh, by scaling. And I write the homogeneous coordinates like, like this. Um, uh, and, and what I'm going to be thinking about is I'm going to be talking a, a little bit about, uh, uh, so let, let X be a, a, a projective algebraic variety. Uh, so for, for example, X could just be all of, all of PN or kind of, uh, or if you have some homogeneous polynomial, that's all, that's some polynomial F that's homogeneous, say of the same degree D and all the variables X there, so XN, then, then F could be the, the set of all. Uh, projective coordinates where 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 that polynomial vanishes, um, and the general case is you know in the general projective algebraic variety is just an intersection uh, of of these v of f's. Um, so so I've got some projective variety x, and I've got some uh, Riemann surface C or a, a compact smooth algebraic curve, um, and and so given these two things, you you can you can form an algebraic variety, and in particular, topological space, uh, which is the, the, the space of algebraic maps uh, from the curve C to, to the variety X. Um, and as, as an abstract space, it's, it, you know, its points are just parameterized by algebraic maps from C to X, but, but we can kind of describe the topology on the space pretty concretely, um, especially in the case where C is, is just the curve P1, which is, which is kind of the most important case. Um, so say when, when C is P1, uh, then uh, th this algebraic uh, mapping space, it actually breaks up as a disjoint union of uh, different con connected components, one for each natural number. Uh, that's the degree. Uh, and, and the degree D component, uh, the, the set of degree D algebraic maps from P1 to Pn is really just the, the set of, of tuples of, of polynomials G0 through Gn, where, where, where Gi is a polynomial that's homogeneous of degree D in two variables, X and Y. And none of, none of those poly, none of those polynomials are allowed to have uh, any any kind of common factors, so they can't simultaneously vanish at any, any choice of x y. Um, so so that's that's what this this space really is uh, when when you're considering maps from p one to p n, and if you're considering maps from p one to x, well that, that's pretty similar. It's just you have you impose an extra condition on your tuple of polynomials. You say that um, you impose a condition that that. Uh, um, that that when you plug them into f, you get zero. Uh, so 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 yeah. So you can you can topologize this space pretty easily, and you can you can look at the closed space uh, where f vanishes. Um, okay. So so we have this topological space, and, and and I guess the kind of the key the key question that I, I want to ask in general, which uh, you know this is kind of the motivating question uh, of the talk, is what is the homology of of the space of algebraic maps from C to X. Uh, and it's not the sort of question I'm going to answer in general, but I kind of want to motivate that question and say, you know, this is kind of a, it's a little bit of a question from algebraic geometry, and it's also kind of a question from algebraic topology. So I guess the plan for the talk is just, uh, first I want to say why, why might a homotopy theorist or a topologist really want to ask this question? Um, and then I'm going to talk about kind of an anal analogous question uh, in number theory. And then, and then, so that, and, and then I'll actually talk about specific things that I've done. Uh, with with Rano Das, which which con considers kind of a very special case, uh, the case where X is a, a blow up of a projective space at, at, at a number of points. Okay. Um, so I guess the so the first I, I, Siegel was not the first person to think about this, but uh, kind of the first result I want to talk about is is a result result of Siegel, um, and I think he actually started thinking about these spaces because. Apparently, one at least in his paper, he says that one of his friends is a control theorist, and they asked him uh, about about the space. I don't really understand how this space shows up in control theory, but apparently it does. Um, so, so okay, so this is the case where C is P one and X is P one. Uh, okay, and so then the, then the rational map, it, it, you know, instead of writing it in the homogeneous form, we can write it as just a fraction. So it's just a, a rational polynomial, uh, or it's a degree D rational function. Um, and instead of and instead of talking about the space of all algebraic maps, I'll just talk about the space of pointed algebraic maps. Uh, so this is this will be the space of maps from algebraic maps from P1 to P1 of degree D, which take 
uh, which which take uh, infinity to the point one. Uh, and, and, and what that corresponds to is that corresponds to kind of imposing the condition that this coefficient AD and BD, uh, both of those coefficients are equal to one. Um, okay, so, so Siegel kind of considered this space uh, and and uh, he realized that you can actually describe this space kind of a little bit more concretely as as a sort of configuration space. Um, so given uh, given two polynomials a and a, a of x or g zero of x and g one of x, you can look at the zeros. Uh, 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 you can look at the zeros of g zero and the zeros of g one, and you can associate to that like a configuration, uh, like so each each h kind of gets associated to a configuration of zeros and poles. Uh, so you kind of record the zeros and and the poles uh, uh, the zeros and the poles of H, um, and because um, yeah, so we've got C is in, contain, uh, so the complex plane is contained inside of P one, and because we've kind of because we have this pointed condition, we know that none of the zeros and poles are at infinity, so they're all kind of just lying in the the complex plane, and you can write them down, and you get kind of this divisor. So I'll, I'll, like some 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 points that are related positively and some points that are related negatively and, and what this says is and what the space actually is is it's just the product of sim dc times sim dc uh, minus the diagonal so uh, you get a configuration space where where points that are kind of labeled red or positive are allowed to collide with each other and you'll just get a positive point of muscle multiplicity too uh, but but uh, but 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 negative points are kind of no positive negative points and positive points aren't aren't allowed to collide with each other. Uh, yes, is anyone any questions about about this space as I've described it so far? Um, uh, just so the diagonal would just be the subspace of the uh, product where like all of the the points in each. Diagonal. Oh yeah, sorry. I should I said the big diagonal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, so I guess, yeah, I should, so, so maybe, uh, none, none of the red points are allowed to collide with any of the blue points, but yeah, that's a good clarification. Thank you. Okay. Um, So okay, so this is this is some configuration space, and and um, you know Siegel wrote the, I think Sie Siegel wrote this paper in 1979, which was kind of during like this classic era, or maybe shortly after the classic era of kind of configuration spaces, like the kind of the topology of configuration spaces and loop spaces and, and kind of relationships between them. And Siegel was kind of very involved in this, and kind of one of the one of the classic theorems is, is um, this theorem that says that the homology of, of configuration spaces. And the plane is related to the homology of of, of the double loop space of S two, um, like so. Um, and and that so that's just for a kind of ordinary configuration space, which is two of points, none of which are allowed to collide with each other. This space is a little bit different, but it still kind of has a, a similar flavor to it. And you and you can actually uh, you can actually analyze it um, uh, in, in a kind of a nice way. I think I'll, I'll I'll just tell you the argument because it it's kind of nice um, and from maybe from like a modern modern perspective it, it, you you can say it relatively quickly um, so so the idea is that that the space M D which which is sim D minus sim D minus the sim D times sim D minus the big diagonal um, it's it's actually uh, it's an E two algebra uh, so what I mean by that is just that uh, you know given any two configurations you can place them side by side. Uh, with each other and get a new configuration, um, and it's, it's not just kind of any E two algebra. It turns out that it's it has a very, very special form. It's actually, um, it's it's kind of it's it's the free product of the E two algebra n with itself. Uh, so maybe so so maybe what I should say is this: so um, you can you can kind of consider the subspace uh, consisting of only blue points. And you consider consider the subspace consisting of only red points. Uh, and those are kind of two subalgebras. And and actually, uh, well, I guess it's not really a subspace of, of MD as I've defined it. You have to kind of include also uh, places uh, things. You have to include also kind of 
um, you can think of this as being MDD, but if you if you kind of consider MED where E and D are kind of different numbers, then then that that that's literally the the free product of uh, uh, of kind of the E two algebra given by n with itself. Um, so so anyhow, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this kind of quickly because uh, maybe I'll do this a little bit a little bit quickly just because it's kind of using some terminology uh, that, that I don't expect everyone to know. Um, but but the point is that. Uh, so this is this is like a, a free U2 algebra. And so if you deloop it twice, uh, delooping the, the free product is going to just deloop uh, to a wedge. Um, so 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 the double classifying space of this is actually going to be uh, the classifying space of, of n, a wedge with the classifying space of n, which is going to be the infinite projective space wedge, the infinite projective space. Um, and kind of what this will end up telling you is kind of using using the group completion theorem, but it'll end up telling you that the homology of MD actually stabilizes uh, to uh, to the double loop space of P infinity wedge P infinity. Um, um, and and kind of with with so so it turns out that it turns out that there's a um, it turns out that there's kind of a, 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 a fiber sequence uh, that you can get by quotienting uh, P1 uh, by, by the action of C star. Um, anyways, this is, this is all to say just that, that, that there's kind of a natural map from P1 uh, from P1 to P infinity, which P infinity and that, that like omega squared P1 uh, zero is actually gonna be isomorphic to, or is gonna be hom weakly homotopy equivalent to, to omega squared P infinity, which P infinity. P, P. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so that sorry if that was a little bit fast, but but basically what I want to say is that like you know kind of using using these conversion space methods in homotopy theory, you can see actually relatively quickly that that the homology of of the pointed algebraic space that Siegel was considering is actually equivalent to the homology of the double loop space of P one, uh, and the way you do it is by kind of going through this inter intermediate omega squared P infinity, which P infinity, but that turns out to be the same as omega squared uh, P one. Or not literally the same, but the connected components will be come to be equal one. Uh, yeah, does anyone have any questions about, about that? I know I kind of said it a little quickly. Uh, on the yeah. previous page where you were have an equation where you were taking a limit over D and then D turns up on the right-hand side too, is there any condition? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I should... The right-hand side? I, should, I guess I should say this. Um, oh. Uh, but I guess the point is the point is basically that when you have when you have like so when you take the double loop space you get a group um, and so all the connected components will have the same homology so the kind of this limit uh, somehow like this limit you know you can just think about one of the terms. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So basically, okay. So basically the summary is that by relating, by relating algebraic maps from P1 to P1 to configuration spaces, uh, Siegel showed that, um, that as, as long as D is sufficiently much larger than I, uh, that the homology of this, um, the homology uh, of this pointed algebraic mapping space is actually uh, the same as the homology of of, of uh, this double loop space of P one or the double loop space of the sphere equivalently. Um, yeah, and 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 with a little bit more work, you can kind of instead of just doing the pointed version, you can do kind of the unpointed version, uh, where you relate algae with top gain. 
Um, yeah, and then and then you and then there's all there's really kind of a more general. So Siegel actually didn't just do it for P1 and P1. He did it for X being PK and C being uh, an arbitrary projective. Uh, I guess he did it actually for some singular curves too, but I'll just say a protective smooth algebraic curve. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so so maybe that's kind of my 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 homotopical motivation for the, this result. It's kind of at least in the case of P, PN, it, it's kind of nicely connected to the theory of configuration spaces and loop spaces and things like that. Um, okay, uh, and I guess you know this is like a natural question to ask is is you know uh, you know does does this result really generalize so. Uh, so what we had is that we had uh, we had that this algebraic mapping space, which is kind of potentially complicated, um, uh, and and what 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 happened is that as as d got large, uh, the, its homology actually started agreeing with the homology of the topological mapping space, and and, and yeah, so the the homology of the space of all continuous maps from C to X, and for that there's kind of all sorts of kind of like homotopy theory has a lot to say about the topology of the space of continuous maps from C to X, and it has a lot less to say about the space of uh, algebraic maps. And so it's kind of it's kind of a reduction to go kind of from kind of a, a harder algebraic problem to an easier maybe problem in homotopy theory. Not that like you can necessarily always compute these spaces, but at least there's kind of spectral sequences that will kind of converge to the homology of them. And, and there's things you can do. Um, yeah, so the question is, yeah, how, how far does this kind of result generalize? Um, and I'll, I'll say a little bit more about various generalizations of this, uh, uh, but people have kind of started to have, have used variants on Siegel's methods to do things for certain homogeneous spaces like frag varieties and flag varieties and, and Grassmannians and Torah varieties. Um, and there's kind of a there's kind of a general conjecture due to Cohen, Joan, Siegel, uh, but I, I won't say that here. Okay. Um, yeah. So that that's kind of the topological. Uh, that's kind of some motivation for topology. And now I kind of want to switch directions a little bit and tell you about, um, and I want to tell you about kind of a uh, kind of a number theory question that's kind of uh, uh, analogous to this. Um, so I, I'm sure you're kind of fam familiar with this, uh, uh, this, this story at least a little bit, um, but, but I'll, I'll tell it to you uh, anyways. So when it, whenever you kind of have, whenever you have an algebraic variety, um, say defined over the integers, you can you can reduce it, uh, you can reduce it in mod p. Um, so so we can kind of we can we can kind of consider a finite field analog. So we can consider a variety that's defined over over a finite field and uh, uh, an algebraic curve, and we and we, we can still cons consider that the, this variety, and we can ask about now instead of just the ordinary cohomology, we can ask about the a, a tall cohomology, and we can ask: Does does the homology kind of stabilize to, to something, uh, something like the topological cohomology? Um, uh, and one reason that this is kind of uh, an interesting question to ask is that if you have an algebraic variety, then it, it's 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 cohomology groups are actually closely related to uh, it, the point count. So if you if you have a if you have some some variety, so just just some uh, something, uh, something. Let's say, say some projective variety, uh, and you're looking at the number of solution, the number of FQ points uh, of it. Then, 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 if you know it's cohomology, then you can say something about uh, the number of FQ points using uh, the Gordon deflectors with the trace formula. Um, so, um, and. And for the okay, and for the specific uh, kind of so for the specific uh, algebraic variety that we're considering, the space of algebraic maps from P one to X, uh, the the FQ points uh, of the space of algebraic maps from from P one to X um, has a very nice description. So uh, so uh, the point the point is that if if I have 
if I have an algebraic map uh, from from p one from p one to x, remember if, if x say is say x is 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 this vanishing locus of some some homogeneous polynomial, um, then uh, then like what what a map from p one uh, to x corresponds to is it, is it, 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 it corresponds to like the, this tuple of polynomials g one uh, through g n where 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 f of g i is equal to zero. Um, and so so an f q point of uh, of the space of algebraic maps actually corresponds to a to a solution uh, or to to an f q joint t point uh, of of x. Um, so so all this is all this is really saying is that if you have a map, then you can express that map as as as, as a number as a collection of polynomials. Those polynomials will be elements of f q uh, of t. And so you get a correspondence between FQ points of the mapping space and FQ uh, a T a joint T points of, of X. Um, and, and furthermore, like we were kind of considering degree, we we're kind of we we're considering the degree of various maps uh, from P1 to X, and those kind of correspond to, to FQ T points, which which number theorists would call of, of being of height Q to the D. Um, and so kind of the idea is that if you have if you know something about the homology of this space of algebraic maps from P1 to, to X, then you know something about the asymptotic number of height Q to the D points uh, using the Scrodin Glutcher's trace formula. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so, so I guess what, yeah, so what, what I wanna, so I guess what I wanna, what I wanna say is that if you kind of go one step further and instead of thinking about uh, F Q joint T points of X and you kind of think about rational points of X, then there's actually kind of uh, a series of conjectures called the many, many tier of pair conjectures, which kind of say something about uh, the asymptotic number of rational points on a variety. Um, so there's there, there yeah so there's some conjectures that say that if you have an algebraic variety, uh, uh, which it, which it, uh, which satisfies the technical condition of like say of being Fano, uh, which which basically means that it, it's it's a kind of a positively curved variety in some sense, um, then there's then there's kind of a there's a prediction or a kind of a sequence of conjectures about the asymptotic asymptotic number of rational points, x, um, of of kind of a given height. Okay, so okay, so so I guess I, I guess this is all to say that, that this is all to say that that um, that there's kind of an analogy. Uh, in some parts, it's it's actually kind of more than an analogy. In other parts, it's just kind of purely an analogy. Um, it, it, yeah, so maybe I'll just say it's just it's just an. I'll just I'll just think think of it as, as kind of being an analogy. So so the the, the question of kind of computing. Uh, the homology of, of the space of algebraic maps from P1 to X is kind of analogous uh, to computing the, the homology of the space of algebraic maps from P1 to X over FQ, uh, which via the grodin dieck trace formula would tell you something about the number of, of, of FQ point, Q T points, uh, which is again, kind of analogous to, to counting the number of rational points on X. So you kind of have the, this list of analogies, which kind of relates the homology of, of the space of algebraic maps uh, to the number uh, of of rational points on a variety, and, and down here, and down here, there there are these 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 con there are conjectures kind of about about the asymptotics. Um, and and so and so, kind of what you want to do is uh, like. If we if we if we have kind of this sequence of analogies, then we should kind of relate. Um, uh, you know, we should we, we we like, you know, what what we can we can ask kind of what is the analog of these these BMP conjectures uh, up here. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you kind of roughly what what an like. Uh, I guess I'll just tell you roughly what what, what an analog of of those. Of, a uh, topological analog of, of those conjectures should be. Um, 
So, um, or maybe I'll just ask you, I'll say, say a question uh, and kind of a positive answer to this question kind of would be an analog of, of those conjectures. Um, so suppose you have X, which is uh, a final uh, projective variety and sees predictive smooth curve and alpha, a class, which is uh, a, a, a class on X, uh, which is kind of in a sense positive. Um, then, then kind of what you expect is that this, this phenomenon that Siegel saw in the case of X being PN actually holds more generally that, that as you take multiples, so here, here the space of algebraic maps that I'm denoting here is alg alpha uh, CX. Um, the space of, so this is the space of algebraic maps with the push forward of the fundamental class of C being the mth multiple of alpha. And we consider kind of the map from, from this space of algebraic maps to the space of continuous maps. Uh, and we ask kind of, does, does, the, does this actually become an isomorphism? Does this become an isomorphism? Uh, uh, for for m much bigger than i, and and, and somehow, uh, I guess it, so. So somehow, um, if if this phenomenon happens, then that's kind of an analog of of, of the the Batir of Manning pair conjectures holding for x. Um, and there's, uh, so this is roughly the case and, and there's kind of uh, more, more formal statements. Um, uh, there's kind of more, for, more, more, more formal statements of this analogy. Um, yeah, so does anyone have any questions about, about kind of this part? I have a question, Phil. Um, yeah. Would you go back one slide? Quickly? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I think, so in this last one where you're counting rational points, is there some kind of like the, the conjectures are essentially like an asymptotic estimation of the number of rational points, right? Is there yeah. like, what is the, so, so in the middle when you're doing the like a tall cohomology and then counting like FQT points, there's kind of like a clear connection between like point counts and like understanding maybe, you know, the action of the Frobenius on like a tall cohomology. Is there some analog of that that is playing the role of a tall cohomology in the bottom row? Because I think no. I'm, a I'm a little confused about how we're sort of turning this rational point counting story into a homological stability story if we sort of don't have kind of like an associated cohomology theory that is doing the point counting for us. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so I, so this is, yeah, so this, this here is kind of purely an, al an analogy and there's, yeah, and you might ask, is there a kind of a further bottom row? And the, they're definitely, I definitely don't know of one. And I think if, if anyone did know of one, it would be like a really big deal. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. But I don't, I don't, I don't even know if you expect one to exist. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's purely, so I guess the way I'm thinking about this is it, it's kind of purely, like you, you can get some sort of formal statements where you can relate you know, if, if your X is defined over the integers, then you can kind of relate these groups to these groups and you can use these groups to say something about this, but then kind of this, like there's no, it's, it's just kind of just an analogy. Um, I yes. should say that people have kind of formulated that tier of many and parity conjectures over function fields, um, but the, somehow like to number theorists, it's not quite as interesting. It's like, they're probably most interested in just the rational numbers. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, and, 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 and furthermore, I'm not, I'm not trying to actually prove, uh, or at least at this stage, I don't really know how to prove anything new about counting solutions like this using, using <laughs> it's kind of more of just like, and it's more of an analogy that's kind of like, there's various techniques on, on the number theory side that you can try and transfer over here to think about these mapping spaces and vice versa, but there's no kind of there's no kind of direct actual mathematical implications that I want to talk about right now. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so yeah, maybe I should kind of mention. That being said, I, sh I should mention some, some, some that there there is kind of a correspondence between things that are known 
on on various various sides. So like so so here I'm just listing some some previous results. So um, yeah. So so as I mentioned, Siegel like so considering various X's. Um, uh, Siegel kind of proved that there's homological solution for PN and then Kirwan and then also uh, all, all the kind of these various people in some combination proved things for Grassmannians, flag varieties, and Torah varieties uh, on the topological side. They proved that there's kind of homological stability uh, to the topological mapping space. Um, at least when uh, at least at least when your source curve is P1, let's say. Uh, and then kind of coincidence Kind of purely by coincidence, uh, uh, Shanuel uh, proved uh, proved kind of uh, the, the version of these Batir of Manning pair conjectures. Actually, before the Batir of Manning pair conjectures were stated uh, for PN in the same year as uh, as Siegel, uh, though though it could be kind of it could have been proved earlier. And I think he announced his proof in 1964. Um, and then yeah, and then there's the kind of like these these Batir of Manning pair conjectures have been proved for for. Uh, for Grassmannians and, and, and flag varieties, and also kind of and also toric varieties, um, and, and that's kind of um, yeah. Uh, and okay, and I, okay, so and I guess stretching the analogy a little bit further, um, there's um, yeah for the the other place where these bacteria many pair conjectures are actually known is for hypersurfaces of a very low degree. Uh, so if you have a hypersurface in PD that has degree less than log two of D, uh, and there's kind of some work of uh, Browning and Sawin that kind of take uh, these techniques that Birch uh, used to used to do this and, and kind of try to transfer them at least partway over in, into topology. Um, uh, it kind of and so so they they kind of developed a circular method building on work uh, of Ellenberg Vekertesh and also uh, of Pugin. Um, yeah, and then maybe the last thing I want to say is that, uh, you know, you you can instead of just considering your target X to be a projective variety, you could also consider it to uh, there there's there's some sense in which you can kind of consider it to be uh, instead of a projective variety, you can like you can consider kind of uh, a, a target being some sort of a stack, and in that case, uh, maps so maps from uh, your curve to BGLN holomorphic maps from your curve to BGLN will be kind of the space of holomorphic uh, vector bundles. Of rank n on your curve, and that space of holomorphic vector bundles is actually kind of close to the space of topological vector bundles, um, and so you can kind of do homological stability in that setting too. Uh, yeah, and then there's some other, other, other things, and the, there's actually there's been some recent work too um, by Banerjee and, and other people uh, on this. Um, okay. Um, so, so I, I guess I want to. What I really want to talk about is just, uh, just the kind of. So, so, so in general, maybe you expect that there, that you can say something for fine varieties, but I, I just want to consider, uh, the case where x, e, the dimension of x is equal to two, uh, and in this case, like a fine variety, is it, just is just is also called just a, a del Pezzo surface, uh, and and they're and they're completely classified. So there's, uh. So you can either have a P1 times P1, or you can have a blow up of projective space in uh, less than or equal to eight points. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so 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 I really just want to talk about blow ups of projective space uh, in in less than or equal to eight, eight points. Um, and so the, from an arithmetic perspective, uh, you know these these these. Uh, the Batir of Manning pair conjectures have been kind of studied um, uh, per, relatively heavily for these Delpezzo surfaces. And, and so uh, so when R is, and, and it, it gets basically, the moral is that things get harder the more points you blow up. Uh, so for when, when you're only blowing up one, two, or three points, the variety that you get is actually toric. And so kind of these methods using toric varieties apply. Um, and, and, and so for everything's kind of known in those cases. And then the case where you blow up four points, uh, was done by Dilabratesh. And then when R equals five, it's been done in certain special cases. And when R is greater than equal to six, uh, basically that's not known for any smooth X. Uh, these Batir of Marini pair, pair conjectures aren't known for any smooth X. Uh, and then on the topological side, we, we, we don't really know very much at all. Like, um, yeah, I think people haven't just haven't really considered uh, uh, maps to the blow up of, of projective space so much. Um, 
Okay. Uh, yeah, so, so the question is, yeah, so is it the case that for every ample class, uh, does, uh, does uh, let's say, like does, does the map from alg M alpha CX to the, the algebraic mapping space, the topological mapping space actually, is, is this map an isomorphism of homology? Um, okay. Yeah. So now, I, yeah, yeah. So now I, I just want to talk about um, uh, my project with Rano, um, which is which is considering the case where X is the blowup of uh, of PK at, at at R points. Um, and really, the case where K equals two is is the most interesting case because it's this delta so surface case. Um, okay. So this blowup is is just uh, you know I take the projective plane and I, I have R points, and I replace each of those points by a copy of P1 by an exceptional advisor. Um, and in this case, uh, so so X is my blow up, uh, and H2 of X is just uh, is a free abelian group uh, generated by by uh, so so this is H uh, so it's generated by the class of a hyperplane, and also the class of the exceptional divisors. So, so I guess this is the Poincaré dual. Uh, uh, so in particular, if I have a homology class on X, uh, that homology class is specified by its intersection numbers with uh, with kind of the hyperplane in, in P2 and also with the, the exceptional advisors. Uh, okay, so this is this is all to say that that that, that a homology class, like, if if I if I want to look at a homology class, like this, this is specified by like a tuple of numbers, uh, z times z to the r. So we're so I'll call this d and this n i. So so yeah, so so a homology class is just specified by d and n i, where d it tells you the degree uh, of the map to to, to p. Um, D tells you the intersection with H, and NI tells you the intersection with EI. Um, okay, so so yeah, let me tell you how you kind of one way of kind of thinking about about this space a little bit more concretely, the space of algebraic maps in this case. Um, so if you want to kind of if if so if you fix a collection of numbers uh, D and I, which are which are uh, greater than or equal to zero. Um, and you consider the component of the space of algebraic maps from C to X, uh, which which satisfy, uh, you know, the component which satisfies uh, the push forward of C is equal to alpha, and the push forward of the class of C is equal to alpha, or equivalently that uh, the intersection of, of C with EI has multiplicity N, and the intersection of C with H has multiplicity D, then, then this space actually has a more concrete description as just the, the uh, as the space of degree d maps from c to pk, uh, such that the preimage of pi uh, has multiplicity ni. Uh, so, so, so what this says is that, like, to, to specify kind of a a point uh, in this algdn x, um, or let's say just to specify a point in alg p one x. Uh, then, then, then all you need to do is you need to like to specify a point in algdn p one x. All I need to do is that I need to give you like a list of polynomials um, uh, of degree of homogeneous polynomials of degree d in x and y, which kind of pass through each piece of i uh, and i times with multiplicity. Okay, so I, I've drawn like an element in alg uh, d two, the LTP two. Um, yeah, so yeah, so the, so the, the kind of the way this correspondence between algebraic maps to X and algebraic maps to PN works is you can kind of either post compose with the projection from X down to P two, uh, from X down to PK, or you can um, kind of take the proper transform. Okay, um, so. Uh, let's see. 
Yeah, so I'm interested to say, does anyone have any questions about um, about this kind of correspondence? Okay. Um, so, so okay. So I guess what I want to say next is that just uh, a little bit about um, a little bit about how you kind of get a handle. So, how do you how do you actually get a, get a handle on on these spaces? Um, okay. So, 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 so for simplicity, I'll just take C to be P one, um, and then so what what this description is is is, is saying is that uh, if I want to if I want to know about uh, the space of algebraic maps from P one to X, um, and then what what I can describe it more concretely as, as just uh, a collection of k k plus one uh, degree d homogeneous polynomials in X and Y. Uh, for whatever reason, a degree d homogeneous polynomial in X and Y is no, denoted as like a section of uh, O of d to the k plus uh, of O of d. Um, okay, so I've got. Uh, degree D, I've got K plus one degree D polynomials in X and Y, and they can't they can't simultaneously vanish. So maybe I should say not simultaneously vanishing. Um, and satisfying the condition uh, that the the multiplicity of the pre-image of the line Li is n. So, so what's Li? So Li, uh, so Li um, inside CK plus one is the line corresponding to Pi. Uh, yeah, so so this algebraic map space is a quotient by C star of, of just a list of, of a collection of polynomials that satisfy certain conditions. So they're not allowed to simultaneously vanish. And furthermore, the multiplicity of the pre-image of Li has to be Ni. Um, and and this, this space MDN is actually an open subset of kind of a larger space where, um, of a larger space where, uh, so I, I can take, Basically, what the, what this larger space is is I take uh, I take each collection of G's, so each each, each tuple of G's uh, to the pair consisting of, of the preimage of each Li and G. Um, so 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 it, like I can continuously uh, I can continuously take the preimage of Li and get some some divisor or or really uh, some some subset. Of P one uh, counted with multiplicity. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. So the point is that uh, if I've got a tuple of polynomials, I can kind of take take that tuple of polynomials to to that tuple of polynomials together with a UI kind of rec recording. Um, Kind of recording the pre-image, uh, the pre-image of Li, and, and that map actually kind of gives me an open embedding. Um, it gives me an open embedding from uh, from my space MDN uh, into th this kind of incidence correspondence consisting of tuples uh, of consisting of, of, of tuples of, of divisors, and 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 then sections of of, of d to the k plus one, uh, which satisfy a certain incidence condition. And this should be an ally here. Um, and the point is just that that this space here, like this space here, uh, maps to 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 the space that I'm calling Wn, which is just the space of of divisors, uh, uh, the space of divisors, uh, which are pairwise disjoint. Uh, and. And this projection map is actually a vector bundle, at least when when d is bigger than the sum of ni. Okay, so the reason why this map is a vector bundle 
is basically if if you if you if you kind of think about what the like okay so if you think about what the fiber is uh, above one of these UIs is it's it's base it's just the collection of all the collection of all G's which satisfies these inst instance conditions. So it's the collection of all G's satisfying G of UI is contained inside of LI, and those are actually linear conditions. Um, and, and I guess the, the point is that uh, if you if you make the assumption that uh, that D is bigger than the sum of NI, then those linear conditions are, are like they always, then those linear conditions for every collection of UI actually can impose the same co-dimension conditions. And so you kind of get, you get that the fiber is a vector space and that the, the fiber also always has the same dimension. And so you get a vector bundle. Um, okay. Um, so, okay. So, so what was what what the point of this? So we, we took this kind of space we cared about uh, and we, we wrote it as a quotient of some open subset of a vector bundle. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of studying the space itself, we're going to kind of study the complement. So, so EDN is the name for my vector bundle. And MDN is the space, uh, uh, like the C star cover of 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 the space of algebraic maps, uh, and the complement, uh, and the complement of, of MDN instead of EDN, uh, is is basically is the the collection of all tuples uh, consisting of of UI uh, of UI and G, where G either kind of G either kind of simultaneously vanishes at some point of C, or there's some there's some divisor of degree n i plus one uh, such that G of V i is contained inside of L i. So like, uh, so remember M D n is kind of the, the space of all maps that have multiple. So it's that the multiplicity is exactly n i, and then the complement is is all the ones where. Uh, the multiplicity is at least one more, so that there's there's some some i naught and some vi naught such that uh, g kind of passes through li one more time. Um, okay, uh, and then so so basically, if you kind of want to if, if say if you say you want to kind of understand the homology of of m, then then roughly speaking, you know, the first approximation m is kind of the the, the homology of m. Is, the homology of E minus uh, the homology of kind of the space of uh, you take the homology of E and then you subtract off um, uh, the homology of this is incidence correspondence. So the set of all V comma G such that V is strictly contained inside of U uh, and G of U is uh, uh, G of V is contained inside of L. Um, so you take you subtract off these kind of two two terms, which correspond to the the two or kind of the two different pieces of the complement. Uh, but then you've kind of overcounted some, so you have to add back in uh, various things. And um, uh, but okay, so this this is some sort of heuristic you can use. And uh, I guess the nice thing is that the first is that. If you look at each of these things and you look at each of these instance correspondences, they're, they're, they're kind of all, all of these are vector bundles kind of over something. Um, so these terms are all going to be vector bundles, at least provided that, that your number D is sufficiently large relative to N. Um, okay. And uh, the more, I guess the more formal version of, uh, the more formal version of, of this kind of heuristic inclusion exclusion is, is, is called the Vassiliev method. Uh, uh, so, so, so what Rano and I do is, is we, we, we use this post set. Uh, so we let P be kind of the, the post set of kind of, of divisors. So it's, it's a, it's post set consist consisting of, uh, uh, VI from I R and T, which are, which are, which are divisors in SIMC, uh, satisfying the condition that T is contained in VI. And we use this post set to kind of construct uh, a simplicial resolution of EDN minus MDN. Um, so, so the idea is that uh, there, there's some space Z uh, with, whose points are, are, are just given by uh, 
pairs VIT and G kind of satisfying the incident incidence conditions uh, imposed like the incident incident conditions kind of imposed by VI uh, in T. So the fiber over VIT is the set of all G such that uh, G of VI is contained in LI and G of T is uh, contained in zero. And then you form a sort of bar construction uh, from, from this post set and you use that to, to resolve uh, uh, like you form a bar construction. So a, sem a semi, really a semi-simplicial complex uh, of chains uh, and you use that to resolve the, the complement. Um, and the idea is that you, 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 uh, you, so well, the idea is that if you filter uh, this semi-simplicial space app appropriately, um, then you can uh, obtain like a, a special a special sequence uh, uh, converge, converging to the compactly supported cohomology of this complement, and whose terms are kind of uh, or really I should say whose low degree terms are related to vector bundles over configuration spaces. Um, yeah, and, and the point is that once you kind of know about the compactly supported cohomology of this, of this complement, you can actually figure out the compactly supported cohomology of MDN. And then because MDN is, is an open subset of a vector bundle, it's smooth, so that tells you about the homology by quantum gray duality, and then that'll tell you something about the homology of MBN mod C star, uh, which is kind of the space we care about. Um, and the idea is that uh, at least if D is sufficiently large relative to N, then kind of the low degree terms of of, of the spectral sequence kind of kind of stabilize, uh, and we can we can actually compare them to to a resolution of of, of a different space. Um, that, that's kind of of a more topological, of a more topological nature. Uh, so instead of MDN, we have a space called NDN, uh, and, and basically what this consists of is it consists of elements uh, W and WN together with sections of OOD to the K plus one, which are now continuous sections instead of uh, algebraic sections, um, and where you kind of impose. You can you you don't impose very many holomorphicity conditions, but you do impose some holomorphicity conditions at uh, at the points of UI. Um, so maybe W is equal to UI. Um, okay, and then and then what we do is we show that this. Uh, Okay, so we, we, we construct a resolution of this space, which is analogous to the resolution uh, that we use to con consider MDN, and we kind of compare them with each other to, to show that kind of the homology of MD, the homology of MDN, uh, at least in some cases, can be compared to the homology of MDN. Uh, and then we show that NDN mod C star actually can be compared to something that's more that, that's even more kind of purely topological. So it's actually related to the space of uh, continuous maps from P1 to, to the blow up. Yeah, remember X is T one, P R, P two, or P K. Uh, it can be related to the space of continuous maps of the blow up, uh, such that the pre-image of each exceptional advisor is discrete, and that um, and at at, a, at each um, at each point of intersection of F with the exceptional advisor, the intersection is actually strictly is actually strictly positive. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so all this to say is that this is kind of our approach to to understanding the homology of, of these uh, of these uh, of these algebraic mapping spaces. And what we can show is that uh, at least when you kind of have certain inequalities on D and N, then 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 if you take an alpha, uh, so if you take an if you, if you take a homology class alpha um, satisfying uh, this these inequalities on D and N, that, and you look at positive multiples of it. Uh, then eventually, if you look at uh, eventually the homology of uh, uh, the homology of this algebraic mapping space actually uh, uh, the the homology of this ma algebraic mapping space is actually isomorphic to hom the homology of uh, of, a, of a kind of a topological mapping space consisting of not all continuous maps from C to X, uh, but ones which uh, have this positive intersection multiplicity con condition 
with the exceptional divisor. Um, okay. And uh, so maybe I should mention, so um, yeah, so so one so one thing that we can use it to do uh, is we can, so this is kind of our, our general result for blowups, um, but then in the special case of a, of a degree five del petso surface, which is the case where you take P2 and you blow it up at four points, uh, then we can actually kind of go further and, and as, as long as our kind of source is P1, uh, we can actually go further uh, and, and kind of get rid of this positive intersection multiplicity condition. Um, uh, get rid of this positive intersection multiplicity condition and kind of get a statement about how uh, how the algebraic mapping space uh, approximates the topological mapping space uh, in that case. Uh, and this is only for uh, this is only for pointed maps. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Um, so maybe I should say to go yeah to go, go going uh, going from this theorem uh, to this corollary. Um, to kind of do it, uh, there's I guess there's a, there's a few ingredients that go into it. So the um, so the first is that uh, to kind of uh, well maybe I shouldn't say too much, but maybe what I'll say is that is this. So like the, the the key thing that kind of lets us go from this positive intersection multiplicity condition uh, on on topological mapping spaces to all continuous maps is, is basically um, is that we we're is that you're kind of able to. Uh, sorry, this should be. Um, I guess the, the key thing is that there are previous results for toric varieties, uh, and and once we kind of have the space of all continuous maps uh, from P one, or so once we have a space of continuous maps from uh, P one to. Uh, okay, maybe I should say this. So, like, we don't have we kind of don't have a we don't have a general method from going from this positive multiplicity mapping space to the arbitrary continuous mapping space. Uh, but in special cases, because there's already kind of results known about toric varieties, we can leverage those to kind of say that if you're stabilizing to this one, then you actually also have to stabilize uh, to this one. Um, and I don't know if I was supposed to go for 15 minutes or for an hour, but I guess I went for an hour. Uh, so maybe I'll just leave it on, on some questions. So uh, so there's, I think there's like there's still a lot of questions that you can ask, for instance, like we don't really know what to do for degree three or degree four del petso surfaces. Uh, and also kind of a weakness of our methods is we don't know how to comp compare the space of topological. Like in general, we don't know how to compare the space of positive intersection multiplicity maps to the space of all uh, continuous maps. And we also just don't know that much about other algebraic varieties. Um, so there's a lot of kind of questions that I don't know if anyone has any ideas on, I'd be happy to talk about. Uh, yeah, I think I'll stop there. Great. Let's thank Phil for, for the very interesting talk. Any questions? Um, Phil, um, does your method have like any says about like whether the lower bounds of the like, you know, whether like where you start seeing stabilizations or um, it's only kind of like an existent kind of uh, result? Oh, can you say it again? Sorry, my I'm getting kind of a weird echo. Sorry, I didn't hear you fully. Yeah, can, does your method have like any um, suggestions about like um, the range, like the vanishing range, or oh, sorry, like the stabilization range? Oh or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I was like um, yeah, so it is a linear range. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it, yeah. So it will, it's it's a linear range. Um, but the, the actual constants kind of depend on alpha. Um, but we, but we, yeah, what we don't know is we don't know, like we don't know that much about the unstable cohomology. Um, Thanks. Sure. Other questions? I have a question. Um, the pizza surfaces are characterized, uh, are remarkable for a few. Uh, for a few uh, things uh, uh, other than fun, being final, uh, there is also um, a Minkowski uh, or Lorentzian inner product on the Picard group or second cohomology group. Uh, and um, 
and uh, when you keep blowing up, um, yeah, and well, uh, when you keep blowing up, something changes uh, in that space. Uh, uh, you know, basically the complement to the canonical divisor uh, will become uh, not Euclidean. Uh, will uh, have uh, the induced metric there will not be positive definite. Uh, so uh, in, uh, does it uh, somehow uh, can it be used for addressing the questions for the pesos as compared to uh, general blow ups? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's a good question. Um, so maybe I should say that like so we're yeah, so really like in our work we're not using too much of like the special geometry of of Del Pezzo services, I'd I'd say like the the one okay, the one place where kind of we're using some of this structure is just um, uh, is like we like so you have like an action like you you have this the the uh, you have an action of a vial group essentially on, on your space and we're kind of using some of that symmetry uh, to get basically we're kind of using some of that symmetry of the Del, Del Pezzo services to get a slightly bigger volume of 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 this ample cone. Which kind of goes into this corollary. Um, I guess maybe the other thing I should say is that, like, uh, like okay, so maybe here here's one thing that that I should mention, which is that say you're say you're blowing up, uh, say you're blowing up uh, P two, um, then if you have a map from P one to P two or to to the blow up of uh, P two, which, which takes just P one to the exceptional divisor E. Uh, then because the self intersection number of the exceptional advisor is negative, like that map can't be varied anywhere algebraically. It's kind of just an isolated component. Um, and kind of, so so what this is meant to say is that if you have kind of a rational curve that, that has self intersection number negative one, uh, then that, that curve is not going to be anything like an ordinary continuous map from, from P, P1 to your variety, because it's going to be rigid. You're not going to be able to deform it at all. Uh, and kind of what happens is that you, as you blow up more points, uh, like you get more and more curves of self-intersection negative one. And as soon as you blow up nine points, there's actually infinitely many. Uh, like there's only finitely many when you blow up, like if you just blow up from one through one through eight points, and then there's only finitely many curves of self-intersection negative one. Uh, but then, but yeah, then, then kind of what breaks down is that as soon as you blow up the ninth point, like you're, yeah, you don't have this positive definite condition anymore. And so you get infinitely many curves of self intersection number negative one, and that kind of destroys any any hope of. Yeah, yeah, the vial group also becomes infinite. I see. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'm in a text on those exceptional curves. I see. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, if not, let's thank uh, Phil for the very interesting talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, good to see you, Phil. Oh. Yeah, thanks, Ravi. I mean, it's hard to, to hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? Sasha, maybe you should stop the recording.